Hello folks, welcome to the Baker Barn. Uh, I haven't done a video in a long time. I've been very busy. The weather's been crappy. My wife and I have been moving into the new house, which we've named the Baker Barn. Uh, just been a lot going on, so I haven't been able to get out on the water. It seems like it's been raining every day. I've had a chance to go. If it wasn't raining, the sun was shining, but the wind was blowing 30, 40 miles an hour. Uh, about a week and a half ago, I took delivery of my new Sea Art Protégé, which I'm sitting in right now. Been working hard. My, my friend Charlie Bunning's been helping me. Corey Batterson came over and helped me uh, last Sunday along with Charlie. We, we've been working hard to get this boat rigged out. It's not completely done, but I think it's uh, far enough along that I can do a little walkthrough for you. And that's the purpose of the video today. I'm just going to do a real quick walk through, show it to you. We're sitting in the garage, it's raining, uh, weather's bad, so we'll just have to do it inside, uh, but I'm ready for the weather to break and to go fishing. But uh, let's get started with the walk through. Okay, we'll just start up here at the front. As you can see, I went with uh, red over black. Um, it, this is a 20 foot long uh, boat. Like I said, it's a Sea Arc Protégé. I had to uh, get my Mike Baker video stickers on right away, of course. Got the bimini top. I've got a full enclosure for the boat. Fits really nice. I put it on the other day. Uh, very well designed. Of course, now we're getting into the warmer weather. Probably won't be using it much until the winter time, but it sure be good in the rain. Uh, we've been spending our time putting on these uh, power poles, which I think are essential for any kind of fishing. They'll be great to be anchoring for catfishing. I intend to use this boat not only for catfishing, but it's going to be a great boat to troll crankbaits for crappie, to do some long lining, deep well there to stand up in. And uh, so these power poles will come in handy for catfishing and crappie fishing. Um, I bought the boat at Midwest Marine in Harrisonville, Missouri. Same place, of course, that I got my bass cat. If uh, you're in need of a bass cat or a sea arc, I'd suggest you go to Midwest Marine. Great service. Uh, they also sell other boats. I think Vexus and they have some uh, pontoon boats. It's a great dealership. Check them out. I went with a uh, 200 Suzuki. Of course, I had to put my little Mike Baker video sticker on the back of that as well. But uh, let's get up here and let me show you sort of the, I, well, let me say, I, I went with these uh, flotation pods and uh, they came with the brackets for the power poles to get them put on. So that worked great. They just fit right on there, no problem at all. Get up here, I'll open up the business end of this. And uh, I've got a 36 uh, volt trolling motor, Minn Kota Oil Track. So I've got two trolling motor batteries on that side, uh, one trolling motor battery here, and my cranking battery. I'm I'm going with Pro Guide 31 series uh, AGMs. I've never had a problem with these batteries. Uh, I run the same batteries on my Bass Cat, and as you can see, I'm running two. 12-inch uh, Humminbird Solix on the console, a 12-inch Solix on the bow, along with an 8612 Garmin, and I have never run out of juice. And I'll tell you why. Because on that boat, just like this boat, one of the first things I did was install this power pole charge, uh, battery charging system. This thing is awesome. It shares power between batteries when they need it. It has an emergency start. It just keeps them going. But uh, so I've got my four batteries, got my two power pole pumps in here, got my charge. I've still got plenty of room. So let's, uh, I'm gonna get up in the boat. Let's take a look at the inside. Okay, we'll start up here on the bow. Um, as I said, I went with the Minn Kota Ultrex 36 volt trolling motor. 
I had this, uh, was a spare or an extra that I'd take to tournaments because that's what I run on my uh, bass cat. So I had it and I, I put it on this boat. I'm running my Garmin uh, 1222 on the top and a Helix 10 on the bottom. Again, these electronics I had on my uh, Pantera 2 that I sold when I bought this boat. In the front of the boat, there's a storage compartment here that's uh, great for anchors, anchor ropes, whatever you want to put in here. I've got a big anchor, plenty of rope, a couple of spare life jackets, net, fire extinguisher. There's a lot of room in there left. And this boat also has a storage compartment. It's a dry storage up front. Uh, as well i've got more life jackets in here just all kinds of gear it's a big space got some uh, culling tags for crappie fishing tools uh, just all kinds of room in this compartment now this boat i'll show you does not have any rod storage built in and i wanted it this way if you get a ProCat 200, it has built-in rod boxes in the back on the sides, but it takes up a lot of room in my opinion. I opted for more room, and so what I'm going to do for rod storage is I bought these uh, rod holders from uh, uh, Fatfish Design. I think these are great rod holders. They sit on a pedestal. This boat comes with uh, three built-in seat pedestals in the front. So I bought two of these rod holders from Fat Fish Design. They actually put my uh, Mike Baker video logo on the sides. So I'll be able to get eight rods in that one. And the same over here, eight rods on this side if I want. So I'll have plenty of room for rod storage. Can't wait to get all my uh, b and catfish rods that I have stored right up here above the boat on my uh, homemade uh, rod rack. I've done a video on that rod rack, it works great. I've got uh, six rods rigged up for uh, trolling with line counters. I've got six rods rigged up for uh, anchor fishing. I've got some bumping rods. I've got some of my crappie trolling rods up here. Uh, so I'll get those down, fill up my rod storage racks here, and I'll be good to go as far as rod storage goes. Now looking back uh, toward the back of the boat, you'll see this, uh, I, I went to Orsland's uh, in Columbia and bought this rubber mat. I put this in my earlier Sea Arc uh, ProCat 240, and I love it. It, it's, it comes in three foot squares. They interlock together. You can cut it real easy. And uh, I found out in my earlier ProCat, in the wintertime, this aluminum bottom, boy, your feet uh, stay cold. I put this mat down, it cured that. Uh, of course, it also makes it softer to stand on all day. And of course, it uh, greatly reduces noise when you're walking around inside the boat. On the uh, console of the boat, I've got another Helix 10 that's interlinked with the one up front. I, I uh, purchased a stereo. Turn this on, get a little power, hit the master switch. I've got a stereo built in here. It's got four really nice speakers, two here and, and uh, two up front. And then I've got uh, this uh, Suzuki Smart Gauge uh, digital gauge. And I'll tell you, I know nothing about this thing. And it's going to take some... Uh, working with this to figure it out and all the options it's got uh, uh, lots of things that'll tell you trim speed tack of course all the basics but it's got a lot of fuel information 
and I'm gonna have to try to learn to set this up. If anybody has any uh, experience with this gauge and knows anything about it, please send me a message. I'd love to talk to you because there's gonna be a learning curve. But there are a lot of switches on this boat. Of course, your aerators, recirculators, your pump in, pump out. Um, got a cigarette lighter plug, then of course your USB ports. And then over on this side, your lights, uh, bilge, a lot of spare uh, switches to hook things up to. I've got one wired. I'm going to put a double bubbler in the uh, live well and put it on a switch, which I use for my crappie fishing. This thing has a huge console area. I mean, you could uh, almost make a bedroom out of this thing. I, I have it loaded with stuff and it isn't even close to being full, but I keep all kinds of stuff in here. Um, big scales, uh, first aid kit, just whatever you want to put in there. I found these uh, storage boxes from uh, uh, Walmart that fit in here just perfect. And uh, I've got them loaded with with tackle, my catfish tackle, uh, lots of B&M gear, hooks, sinker slides, all kinds of things. I'll show you a little tip here, what I do with my line. If you, if you put your line in these little koozie things, these, these size of spools, then you can pour your line out and it won't unspool on you. It keeps, uh, keeps the line under control. So. I put all my little spools of line in these uh, koozie cups. But these things fit under here very well. In fact, I could get a couple of them under there. I've got some smaller just uh, pouches with a lot of pre-tied rigs in them. And then I've got one just terminal tackle box that I'll set out on the back when I'm fishing with all kinds of stuff. I got some slinky weights, uh, hooks, floats, you name it. But that, that uh, pretty well takes care of and manages my tackle. I've got another one of those storage boxes under the console. It's got a rain suit in it. Um, but that's how I'm gonna take care of most of my tackle. Uh, toward the back of the boat, I uh, found this cooler at Walmart, actually, and it uh, works just perfect. Fits in here great. And so for my shad, I bought this uh, tray, also from Fat Fish Design. It's wonderful. You can set it in, put ice underneath it and around it, and then put your shad in it. Keeps your shad cold, but keeps it out of the water. It'll drain down into the uh, bottom of the cooler and uh, keep your shad very fresh. And then moving on toward the back, of course these sea arcs, have a huge live well, 80 gallon live well. You can get any size catfish you want in there. Insulated lids, keeps them uh, cool from the hot sun in the summertime. Recirculation, aeration, pump in, pump out. Great live wells. I use these little ammo boxes for uh, my weights. I've got one full of egg weights of different uh, sizes. And then the other one, I've got cannonballs. I'm, I pour cannonball sinkers. I like cannonballs. And uh, so again, I've got it just full of different sizes from two ounce all the way up to six ounce. And so that's how I store a lot of my lead. As far as, uh, I got a, from Fat Fish Design, I got a little tool carrier there I put on the uh, side of the live well. Got this big uh, ruler in here uh, to measure the catfish in Missouri. We've got a slot limit on Truman Lake, Lake of the Ozarks, uh, 26 to 34 inches is a slot limit. Can't keep them. So I've got that marked on my ruler. Close this up. And then I purchased this boat with the optional cat rack system, which I really like. It's, uh, 
It's got the uh, slot in it, track rail system, and uh, so the track rail system's in the cat rack, and then it also runs all the way down the side, and even along the front of the boat, uh, all the way up to the front. Of course, we've got the rail system too on the front and the back back there, and I've ordered some round, uh, rod holder basis for the front to add some rod holders up there. And uh, you'll see these rod holders are awesome. My friend, Billy Don Surface made these for me. The guy can make anything. And so he's made these to fit in this track rail system. They're adjustable as you can tell. Um, so you can get any angle you want. I'm using Driftmaster rod holders. I've got some short stem up on the cat rack and then some longer stem down here by the, uh, on the side of the boat. I also put, you'll see I've got some round rail bases here that I bought from a fish bite rod holder company online. I love these things. They're smooth, there's no rough edges. And I got these in the 3 8 uh, inch thread to put smaller Driftmaster rod holders for crappie rods. Uh, if I'm uh, pulling planer boards or I want to set a rod out vertical off to the side, these half inch size Driftmaster rod holders are a little big for my crappie rod. So I can take those off or just move them out of the way put the smaller uh, rod holders in these uh, fish bite uh, rail mount holders and I can pull planer boards out the side or like I say just uh, uh, put rods out uh, on the side of the boat. So I've got uh, three half inch Driftmaster rod holders on each side of the cat rack. Of course in the middle I've got my uh, cutting board that I made. I did a little video on that. I made that myself. And then from uh, Catfish Clothing, I bought this uh, track rail mount for the cutting board, which I love. You can just pull the pin, pull this cutting board right up out of the mount. So if I'm trolling crankbaits or long lining for crappie and I don't need that in the way, I can just take that out. Turn back around the front. Um, like I say, I've got the bimini top here. I've got it in the forward position so that I can stand here in the back of the boat and cast without hitting it. This uh, cat rack, of course, is on this track rail system. And if I wanted, I could move it back uh, more toward me, toward the edge of this, so I wouldn't have to stand up on this uh, deck to get to my rods. Frankly, I like having that room back there. I've got it moved back. But if I get to, to where I don't want to step up on the deck, I can just move that cat rack along that track system up uh, closer to the front edge of the uh, rear deck where the live well is. And so I think, uh, I think that's it. I think I've covered it. Uh, let me put the camera back uh, on the tripod and we'll close this out. Okay, so there you have it. I think I've covered everything uh, of importance on the boat. A little quick walkthrough. Like I said, I had to do it in the garage. It's raining again out there. I can't wait to get this boat on the water. I have not had it on the water yet, but uh, I'm so excited to get back into catfishing. I looked at my paperwork. You know, I had a Sea Arc 240, which was a great catfish boat. I mean, it, it is an awesome catfish boat, but I found it was a little too big if I wanted to crappie fish out of it, trying to get around docks and things. It's just a big boat. I kind of quit catfishing for a while, and uh, so I sold that. I got another bass cat, ran that for a while, but now I've got the itch to get back into catfishing. But not only that, but these boats are great boats for trolling, uh, for, for cropping, uh, you know, crankbaits, long line, you got a big well to stand in, you don't have to stand up on the back of a bass boat, risk falling out. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do more crankbait videos and long line videos for uh, crappie, uh, some planer board fishing, in addition to the catfishing I plan to do. We'll do a lot of drifting, a lot of 
uh, vertical fishing, a uh, lot, of, lot of anchor fishing. I love to just pull up on the bank, put the rods out, and uh, fish for catfish. So I'm looking forward to that. You know, it's been, I looked at the paperwork, it's been four and a half years since I sold my pro cat. I have not been catfishing one time in four and a half years. Hope I still remember how. Frankly, I got the cast net out the other day and threw it around in the garage a little bit. I wasn't even sure if I still knew how. But I think it'll come back to me. There'll be a little learning curve. You have to be patient with me, but I think I still know how to do it. And we're gonna go out and see if we can find some. Hope you'll watch for those videos. And when they come out, I hope you'll watch them. And uh, thanks for supporting me and supporting the channel. Can't wait to get on the water and bring you some more videos. Thanks for being with me.